So we're talking about chat GPT today. We're very stupid people, okay? No, no, I'm... Let I'm, me, I'm, let me please, please talk to us like you're talking to stupid people. Got it. ELI5. Um, yeah. right? Don't use any fancy words. Got, no it, got, it. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, uh, you know, talk restrain like myself. How to talk to me. I'll tell you the, the best... I mean, I'll tell you the way programmers think about chat GPT or the people who made chat GPT think about chat GPT. And this is probably not how the layman would think about it, but chat GPT is a completion agent. Right? It's a next word predictor. So if you give it three words, it'll pick up the most likely next word. And the best way to prove this to you is, and that's not a bad thing, it's, I'm not trivializing ChatGPT's skill set, but I'm just telling you what it is. Like for example, I'm going to tell you a statement, fill in the last blank. Nikhil Kamath is a dash. Entrepreneur. You got a word, right? Ah, there's like, something else. Thank you. <laughs> Now see, now see, now see. There is a cluster of words that you would have said or that you would have thought of. Yeah. But there are there are words which you wouldn't have thought of. For example, Nikhil Kamath is a shampoo. Mm. That doesn't make sense. The word shampoo doesn't, doesn't yeah. fit. So essentially what's happening is it's got a probability cluster of what's the most likely word to come out next uh, after you give it three or four or five words. And that's essentially how ChatGPT works. But that's how GPT works. Chat GPT, and if you've gone to the actual API Wait, playground. What is the difference between GPT and Chat GPT? So GPT is, is the transformer itself, right? It's the pre-trained transformer. That, what is a transformer? So a transformer, so there was a paper many, many years ago called Attention is All You Need. So before that, we used to train something called RNNs, okay? Which were like very slow. What are RNNs? So RNNs are a type of neural network where essentially they did things in a very different way. They weren't make so when you look at a sentence, okay, let's say the sentence is, I am a dog or I have a dog, right? The, what is the most important word in that sentence? It's dog, right? Dog is probably the most important, but, and that's how RNNs work, right? There's one word that's very important. So when you did things like translation, you want to translate that sentence from English to Spanish, you replace each word one by one. But you know, that's not how language works. Like if you translate, let's say a statement like, uh, Mere paas kutta hai to English, not every word will be replaced like that. Some words like, you know, like tra transfer over and stuff. So we so realized... What is the paper called? Attention is all you need. Attention is all you need. By the way, this is a good exercise if folks watching at home, sorry to cut you off. You should go on chat GPT. I did this two days ago, right? Attention is all you need paper. Can you explain this to me like a five-year-old? And it actually literally does that, does that really well. Can you please yeah. So, so they figured out a new technique called attention where they said that instead of looking at a word one at a time, Let's look at these as clusters of words. Let's create this, think of it like a heat map, right? Of all the words that, are, that have a high probability of appearing together and all the words that have a low probability of appearing together. So you basically have this, uh, this space of all the words, you know, like, yeah, like just a word asking, cloud, yeah. like a word cloud, but some are together, some are away. So are you in a way saying that the main point of chat GPT is to be able to predict using probability how to complete something which is in, in that is GPT, not chat GPT. Huh. Now, if you go to the OpenAI playground, and this is where you and really what does GPT stand for? Generative pre-trained transformer. So it's a transformer, but it's a trained, tra somebody's trained it. For, for a dummy like me, what is a transformer? So a transformer is a type of, let's just, so the best way to think about GPT in general is it's a new type of computer, right? With a new programming language and that programming language is English. Now, if you go to the OpenAI playground, if you look at the first Lined for chat GPT, or if we wanted to create a, ch let's talk about how you go from GPT to chat GPT, okay? If you wanted to create a chat GPT from GPT, you literally have to, your first three lines of your prompt are gonna be, hey, you are an AI assistant, okay? You are talking to a human being. Here's an example, AI, colon, blah, 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 welcome. My name is OpenAI, chat GPT, whatever. Uh, how can I help you today? Human, and then human says something. Then AI, AI says something. Then human, dash. Right? And what you're filling in is that first dash. Before that, there's like three, four lines of prompts which say, hey, this is an AI talking to a human. So what's actually happening with ChatGPT is it's completing a statement that is simulating a conversation between you and an AI assistant. Right? In Bing's case, the AI assistant has a name. It's called Sydney. Right? So what's happening is this completion can be applied anywhere. So, sorry, coming back to what Nikhil said, what is a transformer again? Yeah. What is a transformer? So a transformer is a type of computer. Think of it as a type of computer. Mm. And you can use transformer in many ways, but main way to use transformer was translation. Mm. Now we use it for next word prediction. Got it. Right? And chat GPT was, uh, GPT was the transformer. Yeah, it's a trained transformer. It's a trained transformer. So once you have the transformer, you need to put data into it, Correct. right? Think of it like a machine and you need to shove as much data into so it. So it can predict what would come next yes. based on the data. Based on the data, right? 
So someone went and trained this transformer to be a chat assistant. Yes. And that is chat GPT. Yes, that is chat GPT, right? And you can use this completion in any way. And what is the data that has been dumped into this transformer GPT? It's mostly Reddit, right? And the best way to understand... Mostly Reddit. Yeah, it's Reddit. Anywhere, like the internet it was mostly forums. If you look at it more from... More UGC, the better. Yeah, the, the more, more UGC, the better. UGC. Uh, users users are really content. Yeah, and I want to mention this, right? Because people get this wrong. It's not really like whatever question is uh, you're asking has been asked before. It's more like with any AI, it's learning the underlying pattern of how this conversation happens. The best example of this is when you fine tune ChatGPT. You can use ChatGPT as a base and then say, I'm going to give you some pairs of uh, prompt and response, yeah. prompt and response. I'm going to give you many, many pairs of it, maybe 10,000, 20,000, whatever, and I can modify ChatGPT. Now, if you do it with your, let's say I take your WhatsApp and I just rip through all the messages you've replied to. So the message that's been sent, messages that, you're repl that you've replied to, and I just dump it into ChatGPT, eventually it'll also pick up things like your spelling mistakes. It'll pick up things like your style of speech, right? So it's somehow started learning the underlying patterns of what, of, of the, the text body that you've wait, given wait, wait. it. I'm still a little confused. So GPT is a transformer. Yeah. You it's a train transformer. You okay. dump data, it makes predictions based so on the data. So transformer goes transformer plus data equal to GPT. Think of it like that. And that's a, I'm obviously simplifying it, but okay. that's how it works. And when you say training, what does that mean? So training means you dump all of this data into the transformer and you say, well, I, I'm going to, let's say if I have 100 pieces of data, I'm going to keep 20 pieces of data aside. I'm going to be like, these are the prompts, these, these are the responses. I'm not going to feed this into the uh, transformer itself. All this other content I'm going to feed in the transformer. Now it's going to learn the underlying patterns. It uses a neural network. Give me, a, give me an example. So let's say I have a statement called "I'm a dog," right? Uh, 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 or let's say let's take a better example. Um, Hi, my name is Varun. Uh, what should I eat for breakfast? Mm -hmm. And maybe somewhere on the internet, there's a ton, there's some data where somebody has responded to that statement saying something, right? Over time, if you feed it enough examples, it starts understanding that Varun is the least important keyword here, right? And it'll start understanding that well, this person just wants a diet plan. Right? Or this person just wants to know what to eat. So here are the statements. So it's generalizing in a way. Right? So once it's learned the underlying patterns, we take the other 20 pieces that we had kept aside and we test another, it on this. Another digression. How is it learning? So that's, that's complicated. It's a neural network that's behind the scenes. Even experts in the world don't know exactly how it's coming out with you know, enough response. Um, I know a little bit about neural networks because we use it in trading, right? Like yeah. we dump in volume, price, time, data, and yeah. we wait for the network to throw out patterns that it could recognize in yeah. the past. But when you say learning, yeah. that part I'm a little conflicted about. Yeah. So the best way to think about it is every piece of data or every piece of content has features. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, the best example of like how I can explain to you outside of text is maybe let's say faces. Let's say I wanted to train your face. right? And so, so what are the what important is training my face? So maybe I wanted to copy your face. Maybe I want to put your face on Tanmay's face. Okay. Okay. Now, what's important in a face? Do you, by training, do you mean learning my face? Yes. Yeah. Learning the features of your face. So we go into features, right? Now, how do you define what features are? Like you might say you have a nose. Nose is important. You have eyes that are important. But then there are also other things that humans don't understand, right? We don't understand these patterns. For example, the distance between the corner of one eye and the nose may be important. We don't know if it's important or not. And the reason we deploy these ML models is because we don't know the pattern well enough. We don't know like the underlying uh, reason why consciousness comes out or why somebody says something or, or how people form sentences. We, we still don't know all of this. So we say, screw it. We don't get it. Let the computer figure it out. Okay, so let's, let's summarize. Let's go part by part so we remember what you've said so far. You're, you're saying so much. So GPT, transformer. Data is dumped into the transformer. It learns from the data which has been dumped yes. to be able to predict the next word based on probability. Yes, based on probability. So these guys took GPT, added the chat bot yeah. function to it, yeah. created chat GPT. It, yes. <laughs> There's a transformer. GPT is a trained transformer. Hmm. Then they trained it to be an AI assistant when someone chats to it. Yeah, basically what it's doing is it's in completion mode and it has many other modes which are not as good. For example, it has an insert mode. It has a edit mode. But we don't use all of that because it turns out completion is great. But till now we've been trivializing it. The best way to think about it is trans like GPT or chat GPT is a new type of computer 
with a new programming language and that programming la language is English, plain English, right? And you're right, fundamentally we were talking to computers with code. With code you are very verbose. You need to be very specific about what you want, right? And if you miss a word or if you miss like even the syntax, nothing, the computer is not going to understand you, right? Now we have a way to express in English or any other language because it turns out the underlying patterns of all languages are similar. And there are many papers about this where once you train... Uh, Can I ask a question again? Why was it so hard up until now? Many reasons, right? A, we didn't have... I'm, I'm talking about why was it so hard to make a computer understand instructions in spoken language? Because everyone has a different... Like if, if, if you tell me something, right? I might take something else away from it. He might take something else away from it. So it's open to interpretation. And with a computer, the reason you're so specific in code is because a computer is stupid. Like it's smart, but still stupid in some ways. So it can, and even now with tools like AutoGPT, it can go on a tangent, right? It can go wherever it wants. So as specific as you can is good. And till now, the only way we could be specific was through code, right? And you have plenty of coding languages that we've created that, and many are abstractions on top of each other. At the bottom, you have things like assembly language. On top of that, you have multiple, like, like let's say the, the languages we use today, especially on web technology, there's many levels of, you know, abstraction below it. So now we have a way for layman to talk to a computer and make it do what it what you want because it now understands you